We made a character for Dungeon Crawl Classics. Now let's make one for a Mutant Crawl Classics. Hey everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. We're going to go through the Mutant Crawl Classics role-playing game, which is backwards compatible with Dungeon Crawl Classics. So if you want to play uh, your fantasy stuff, if you want to have your peanut butter and your chocolate mixed together, I suppose that's kind of what it is. But the there are some like pure strain humans in uh, Mutant Crawl Classics that's more of a post-apocalyptic gonzo world. If you don't have technology in your game, then uh, your pure strain humans don't really have a lot to do because there's no like powers and stuff for them. Uh, they kind of rely on having pistols and cool gadgets. But that being said, uh, they are intermixable because it really is the same rule set. And we're going to dive in and make a Mutant Crawl Classics uh, character today. Ah, MCC. Here we are. Looks like character creation is going to be very similar to Dungeon Crawl Classics. We're going to roll our ability scores and roll on a bunch of tables and things like that. So I got to get some automatic dice rollers set up. Just like uh, DCC, we're going to roll 3d6 down the line. So we got strength, agility, the eight. Stamina is always kind of spooky. 13. Personality. Twelve. Intelligence. Nine. And our luck. Thirteen. So with these we have a zero. A thirteen is actually a plus one, so that's encouraging. So we have a plus one to our... Oh, and a minus one in agility. <clears throat> so plus one to... Stamina and luck, and a minus one to agility. Next, we're going to roll our zero level hit points using 1d4. All right, so we have two hit points. Two plus one equals three. And we get a plus one from our stamina. And we're going to roll our beginning profession. That's so, this is weird to me because we have table one, one. And then if I go to the next one, we, oh, profession. <laughs> it's, oh my gosh. I was like, I didn't see table one, two because it is so small. Um, we have two choices. It's a 50, 50. We're either a hunter or a gatherer. So let's roll one D 100 and we got 25. So we are a hunter with a wooden spear. And we need to roll a d30 for our birth sign. We roll a 12. So we have a plus one to find secret doors. Look at some of these other ones, like mutation checks, healing rolls, escape traps, armor class. Pretty cool. Roll twice for additional beginning equipment. Additional equipment may also be obtained by barter. So let's roll twice for that. So additional beginning equipment, we're going to roll D100 twice. Uh, we got a 74, so we got a conch shell trumpet. We got a blowgun and 12 darts, 1D3 damage. Roll genotype, Ooh, table 1-5. So that's another D100. We rolled a 51. We are a mutant. Um, and then our subtype is going to be table 1-6, which is a D30. And we rolled an 18, so our mu- Oh, this is our mutant appearance. Oh, that's fine. Mutant appearance. Hair. Our hair is weird, so let's try this again. Roll 1-D6. Um, our hair stands on end. Now, at this point, because we know we're a mutant, I can actually open a mutant- fillable, uh, yeah, f mutant fillable thing here. So I was looking for fillable character sheets so that we could like type it in together. I couldn't find official ones. So this is a non-official one, um, but I, I like it because we can, we can do that. So what's our character name? We need a mutant name. Uh, we're gonna go with Maggot. I think that's fun. 
Oh, my hair's standing on end though. Hmm, maybe skitters. Um, I will point out there's pure strain human, mutant, manimal, or plantient. So a manimal is a animal human looking hybrid and a plantient is a sentient plant. Um, I really like the plantient and the mutants because they get interesting abilities. Like uh, my, my friend played a plantient that had the ability to like solar charge during the day to then fire like a beam of sunlight out of his chest, uh, like Cyclops' like havoc. <laughs> really cool. And then choose an archaic alignment. All zero level genotypes must begin as members of the clan of the cog. Uh, optionally, pure strain humans may choose, choose to be this. Mutants may opt to become members of the children of the glow. Um, we're gonna be a children of the glow, I think. This is where we would start our level zero uh, adventure, but we're gonna level them up to one. But let's go through this. I'm gonna enter this really fast. A few moments later. So mutants, manimals, and plantians, your genotype is your class, a lot like being an elf or a dwarf, but humans can choose from um, a bunch of other ones. So let's look at some of the character classes just so we can like see what we could be. Um, the sentinel, I believe, is... Yeah, fortitude. Yeah, I think you're the tank. Um, and you have an artifact bonus die with weapons and armor. And the shaman is kind of the wizard? Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. You have a natural under affinity for understanding artifacts of the ancients. Yeah, you're 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 a wizard. Um, healer is also up there. You can heal people with your natural healing. Rover, I think, is kind of like a thief, but a little more, yeah. And then mutant, um, so this is what we're gonna be. And then uh, manimal, which is kind of fun. And then plantian. So the cool thing about the manimal is like, if you want to have this fantasy uh, race of like cat people or something in your DCC game, you could totally adapt this and make it work. Um, you might have to change the glow burn mechanic to a spell burn or something like that so that you could uh, uh, make them have the same abilities without radiation, but it can be done. But we are a mutant. So mutants gain 1d5 hit points at each level. Uh, all right, let's roll 1d5. All right, three, but we get plus one because of that. So we are now, we had three hit points and now we have six. Yeah, our lucky roll was 12. Plus one, secret doors. So we have a plus one to reflex at level one. So we're gonna say we're level one. So our minus one goes to one. Our fortitude, we have a plus zero. In our will, we have a plus one. Artifact check is plus zero. Where's that on here? Upon achieving first level, a mutant gains a random 1d3 physical mutations and 1d2 mental mutations. Mutant slash, oh, my profession is hunter. I'm sorry. There we go. My class is mutant. My title is misfit. Skitters the misfit mutant. My action die is 1d20. My crit die is 1d6. My artifact check is zero. And my mutant horror in initiative bonus is 1d3. Okay, that's interesting. Mutant horror bonus plus agility modifier. So 1d3 minus one, interesting. Being the most bizarre appearing of muted creatures, mutants can strike fear in their opposingness, gaining an initiative bonus. Should a mutant ever lose all of their mutations for any reason, that character's genome hardens and the mutant immediately becomes a pure strain human. That's fun. Mutants have some affinity for artifacts of the ancients, giving them medium range bonuses to artifact checks. Radburn. Mutants exposed to radiation or other mutagens may also develop or sometimes lose mutations. Glowburn. Mutants may elect to use Glowburn when activating a mutant power to boost that mutation's effects. AI recognition. Mutants normally receive no inherent bonuses to AI recognition should a mutant have no visible or discernible mutations. The mutant's AI recognition bonus may be plus one. You know, I have a physical book. I should just open it and then I don't have to bounce back a whole bunch. Upon achieving first level, a mutant gains a random 1d3 physical mutations and 1d2 mental mutations. See table 3-2. So 
So we're gonna ignore this Radburn results and we're gonna go to mutations. So we have t physical and mental. Okay, so let's roll 1d3. We get one physical mutation. This is a D100 table and we got a 79 sonic generation. Okay, and then we get 1d2 mental mutations. Coin flip, two, two mental mutations, I like it. So let's roll this again. Our first mental mutation will be a 43. Holographic skin. <laughs> oh no, hot, not holographic skin, that's physical. Illusion generation. And the next one is 88 miles per hour, we get Thought Spike. Uh, so we get a random 1d3 physical mutations and 1d2 mental mutations. A recognition, we went over all that. I think our character is done. We just kind of have to figure out the mutations at this point. Note that while two mutants may have the same mutation, that mutation can manifest in completely different ways for each character. Interesting. And roll the specific manifestation of that mutation. So we still have to do that. Then determine if the mutation is in the active or passive category. Active mutations are used by rolling a mutation check each time the mutational power is used. Passive mutations, the character make a single mutation check upon rolling, upon gaining the mutation, and that results governs the effects of the mutation onward. All right, so here's our regular mutations, and I like down here, like if you roll a 98, or basically like way up a high, you gain... Um, mega mutations, which are these other ones. So let's look at the ones we got. We got Sonic Generation, Manifestation 1d4. We rolled a three. A small organ in the mutant's forehead emits sonic pulses. <laughs> this is an active. And then I will do, uh, yeah, save is... Active, I do all the time. Passive, I would roll now and figure it out. So this is a range 15 feet, yeah. Range 15 feet. What do I roll for a mutant check, though? Oh, it's just 1d20 plus your level. Interesting. For mutation checks. And then glow burn a lot, uh, works like spell burn, so I can burn my physical stats, like strength, agility, stamina, um, or luck, which is not a physical stat, to increase uh, the roll. But it's 1d20 plus 1, because I am level 1. And the save for this is Fortitude versus uh, my mutation check. And we're going to say this is on page... Yeah. And I say page 56, so I remember. All right, illusion generation is also active. We're gonna roll 1d4. We got a three again. Uh, my forehead, boy, we're really focused on my forehead. I should rename myself forehead. The mutant's forehead appears to ripple in concentric circles. Um, and this is another one. So range, line of sight. Two rounds per caster level. Save willpower versus mutation check. Page 68. Um, and I'm able to project a simple illusion, a complex illusion. It's just, I can make a cool illusion. I like it. And then the last one is Thought Spike. And this is also active. Let's roll 1d4. It's got a four. An ethereal red Arm, armit appears around my mute, my head. <laughs> Very focused on my head. The mutant's mental functions speed up in such a fashion that mental mutation checks and will saving throws are enhanced. Oh, that's kind of cool. So for the next round, my will saves are increased by 1d6 and mental mutation checks, which doesn't really help. Uh, I mean, it helps with my illusion generation, but it would be cool to have some others. But you gain more or could lose more as you level up. Uh, because of my level, I have a plus one to hit, and I have a 1d5 spear. Um, I have a minus one to my missile, and I don't have a... Oh, I do. I have those blow darts, which are uh, 1d3. Yeah. So it's actually 1d5 plus one. I think my speed is 30. 
So let's take a look at our character here. This is Skitters, the hunter, who is a level one mutant, a misfit. Um, he has an AC of nine until we get some cool, but he's got a plus one to find secret doors. How does he find those secret doors with his giant head? Because he has a small organ on his forehead that emits sonic pulses and his forehead appears to ripple in concentric circles. Um, and on top of that, he's got an ethereal red helmet that, uh, appears around my head as well to, to do some thought spiking. Um, my initiative is 1d3 minus 1. There are certain things here I feel like they were trying to get you to use more of the funky dice in this. And I'm still not sure on the fumble. And I, I don't know what the the speed base. I guess my base speed is 30. And then maybe if I wear certain armor, it goes down. That's probably what it is. That makes sense. Um, here are artifacts that I have. I don't have any armor. Um, I do have a weapon, which is my wood spear. And damage is 1d5 plus 1. Nope, just 1d5, but we calculated into the melee over here. So this could be a lot of fun. I would like to play Skittles. And it, and my mutation is that my hair stands on end. So that's why I, I just constantly brain activity. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the character creator for Mutant Crawl Classics. Let me know what you think of all of this. And if you uh, would play this. And again, one of those things, like I like to roll randomly for this stuff. I think it's a lot of fun, but you could also just as easily pick the thing you want um, and kind of play along with that or have like a shorter list of, of possibilities. Let me know what you think. We're gonna do some more of these. I've been working on uh, some other games as well and we'll keep exploring the world of Dungeon Crawl Classics, Mutant Crawl Classics, Old School Essentials, and whatever other role-playing game I discover. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.